product. I call the meeting to order. Uh, right here, one of these roll call for us, please. We have Tom Dede. Yep. Arden Zorman. Yes. Josh Stransky. Yes. Glenn Pepper. Yes. Carrie Snow. Yes. And staff, we have Molly O'Donnell. Here. Lisa Gallagher. Here. And Kendra Daniels. Here. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Move on to number two, approval of the minutes from November 14, 2023 meeting. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Second. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? All right, let's vote. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? None. Okay, motion passes. Go on to number three, public invited to be heard. For organizational updates. Um, we don't have anything listed on the agenda, but we do have a couple things that we wanted to mention. For instance, this is the last meeting of 2023. Um, we do have on the calendar so far the same schedule for 2024, on the second Tuesday of the month at 9. Um, it, just want to confirm everyone's good with that. And then ask the question. The reason that we move these to rotating at the properties is so that the public could come. Mm -hmm. That has not necessarily been the actuality. Um, and when we need to do hybrid meetings, it's a big challenge to set up. So we wanted to ask the group, we could hold these at the Civic Center in a conference room and have a hybrid option all the time, or we could keep it at the properties and still do hybrid ad hoc when we need it. Um, it's just a, it's a coordination challenge. We don't have the, the, right. the setup up everywhere. Would, so. would the public, could the public log in virtually as well? That's an option for us. And they could come to the city too. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would have to go somewhere anyway, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for Civic Center as well to make it easier for anybody that needs to log in virtually and then also the public. I mean, we might even have more comments from the public if there's an option for it. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just want it available to them to make it easier for them to also find instructions. Well, the other thing is, is, if it's always at the same place, it's easier for people to remember that too. Right. Rather mm -hmm. than keeping track of the. Yeah. And, you know, there's. If you if somebody from another property comes here, they have to figure out how to get in. And, yeah. You know. So, we're just going to bring that to the group and then show this. Sorry, we were just experiencing about the next meeting for the meetings, 1.4, having a civic center okay. rather than putting them on the property. Since you have to do it in one day, public. Um, Just setting it up for the next. That's basically the same. I think it would be different too if we weren't doing the coffee and conversations. Um, so there's that also where people can, uh, you know, make it and share their input if they don't want to go online or find one of our meetings too. So. I think that in place, I also say that it's a good Okay. All right. Okay. So she'll send out updated meeting invites with the team's name for anybody that wants to join her. Okay. All right. number five development and project updates. Uh, so the big news is. We closed on Village on Main on Thursday. Um, so, I have been sleeping quite hard since. <laughs> 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 Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Um, all in all, closings are always crazy, but this one was definitely our smoothest yet. Katie had a setup. So much was done in advance, and it was really like working through it all rather than cramming it all at the end. So, it was really a success, I'd say. Um, so thanks, everybody. Andy was great to work with, and everyone, it, was, it just went very smooth. So, um, we're kind of in a downtime. We're letting our contractor order stuff, um, and then we will start uh, right on January 16th. Start work January 16th. That is our first move outs. Um, the relocation team has been working with all of the residents. They're doing their one on ones with them right now. Um, and we're working out ways to um, give everybody as much flexibility as possible, like uh, moving into a unit instead of a hotel if we have it and it works out. Um, meaning, if it's, we don't want them to move into one that's not yet renovated. So if they 
have one that's open that we can do that. Um, we went and did the, the project-based voucher lottery there last week. So there's 18 project-based vouchers going on to those units, which we did an open lottery just for residents. Um, and so that is going to be pretty, pretty great for some of those residents. That is just long-term security and um, it helps the property operationally. And so they have not yet been notified, right, of the, the selections. Will be, are being drafted today by Tracy. Okay. So, so they'll be finding that out this week. Um, so. So did you have a good turnout from the people applying? Um, Enough to get the 18? Oh, anyway. oh, yes. We had okay. more than that. So okay. there, there's probably about 15 getting a denial that they were not accepted. So. Okay. And it was totally random. Mm -hmm. Lottery system. Mm -hmm. So. So everything with Village on Main, as the official name, is running right along. We're excited to get started. Excited for this little lull over the holidays and then get started. <laughs> um, for other items for Ascent at Hover Crossing right there, um, we were awarded, so I think that we've mentioned that the city from its ARPA allocation has set aside so far $525,000 for the the Early Childhood Education Center, we need $3 million. So there's five twenty-five dollars from the city. Um, we applied for $750,000 from Worthy Cause. We were awarded, but $150,000, but it's still something. Um, so we're up to, what, almost seven hundred. dollars um, And then we still have DOLA Strong Communities Grant outstanding, and they are supposed to be notifying any day. So we're hoping to, to score on that. And we have, um, we're working with the Longwood Community Foundation still to see if they can help. They want to help, but it's, does their financial mechanisms that they are, have access to work with a light tech project? That's what we're trying to sort out. So um, the project is a go. We were awarded tax credits for that, which is on the first go around. Quite awesome. I can't believe it, really. So um, it is very clear that from the list of awardees, just remember that Chaffa was oversubscribed by about four times on LIHTC, um, which A, shows that there's just really not enough resources out there for what people are even ready to do. Um, and so we need Prop 123 to really kick in, which it seems to be kind of trickling and slow and not opening up new yeah. programs right now, but I'm hoping for January. And then we also, the Boulder County voters approved the affordable housing tax too. So when those funds are available in 2025, um, hoping that that stuff can all backfill this high tech problem that we have. Um, but still doing these projects without tax credits is all still a huge self-funding it basically with those other resources. It's still a big deal. But it is clear from the awardees that if you don't have some sort of unique service model or um, like a, er, there were several with early childhood education centers attached um, or the only other ones that didn't have one of those two things were like the phase five of five. They're just closing out, you know, really wrapping it up with a bow. Other than that, if you didn't have something unique, you were not selected. It really was clear. So going forward, um, thinking about our, our projected projects down the road, we're going to have to come up with some really good stuff or... I expect just wait and keep, keep trying and trying until it works um, or there's more coming. So that is great news, but also gives me a, a, a big you know, strategy, thoughts about our strategy going forward, just trying to get really, really creative. Um, so on Ascent, the idea is to now design it in full force now. Um, it is moving forward. We will fund this ECE one way or the other. Uh, we, we're just piecing it together. It will happen. Um, and then the idea is to close in about July of next summer and start construction, which will take about, I think, just shy of two years. So maybe, maybe it was 18 months. I have to double check. They're so, nailing all that. So what do you know, DOH? What do you think the, the gap funding would be for the ECE? Um, right now we need... We need, what did I say we're up to, 700? We need $2.3 million. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, more than I expected. Right. We applied for, what did we apply for for the, for the strong communities? I'd have to look it up. I can report to it at the end of the meeting. Um, 
and then we know that the Lama Community Foundation <clears throat> wants to give a million dollars, but they they are brand new in, in trying to set up a kind of a, a program like this, and they are really needing it to be a revolving loan fund to keep it going, uh, but that just doesn't work for LIHTC. It needs to be basically a forgivable loan or a grant of some sort. Um, having to actually pay it back is just not realistic. So we're seeing what we can work with them. We're going to circle back in January and see what we can figure out. So do you actually have a vendor on hand for early childhood? Yes, it's a Plum Center. We have an MOU with them establishing you know, what we want. I know and nothing is fully formalized, but um, it's at least an MOU so that everyone knows what we're working towards. But yeah, they serve, they're, they've got multiple locations in Longmont. They pretty much only serve CCAP or Head Start families. Um, they're very established and they've got a good relationship with the city and it's been going really great so far. And it's, we only have room for three classrooms. And so it's most likely gonna be focused at the youngest children because you know four and five year olds can there's more options out there but infants to three year olds or maybe infants ones and twos are harder to find and so we're thinking about we're seeing if we can focus it there it's interesting it's a two-story building which is a challenge with infants because you have to make sure they're on the ground floor or else because you can't have an elevator because they have to crib them out in a fire in any sort of emergency so it's all of those things. So our, our light tech developers are getting a good taste of um, child care licensing right now. So, but it's still in the works. Um, and as other funding sources come out, we'll go for them too. We have until July. Do you know what's the It's doable. I, I think so too. Yeah. With what's out there, mm -hmm. piecing it together, um, and having the LIHTC awarded and having $700 already in the bucket helps those other sources want to just help you finish. So uh, that's the scoop with those. What is the deadline? You need to have that funding kind of by closing. By closing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 2024. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the tax funds only need. Do what they should be doing. Yeah. Uh, we have not, and that's really just from the housing team out there looking. We haven't even looped in human services yet. Yes, or, yes it all, of these, all of these. All of these. There's other groups to talk to that um, we just kind of went through the ones that we, you know, first go. Um, what else do we have? So our. Other properties, we've got the Royal Mobile Home Park. That's just land banked at this point for a future project. Um, we have uh, we have our first land donation from the city's inclusionary housing program proposed. It's going to go to council in January to see if council accepts it. Um, and so the city will, just like Royal, the city will hang on to that for a period of time. But then the idea would be to eventually um, transfer that to LHA and do, do something there too. So we're going to see if that comes to fruition in January. Um, it is about a half an acre on um, right behind the bingo alley. Mm -hmm. So it is an area that already has, there's thistle and in between are operating on that street. Um, that is a challenging section of the city with folks, but I think what we would look to do is something more like um, it might be a like, townhome product or something for families, not necessarily single occupancy, just to, to not have too much concentration right there. Um, so we'll see, but it's a very developable site. It's, it's an easy site to build on, which is important. So that is proposed, and we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. So we're land banking, which is really great. So the city is currently on If Council approves this as satisfying their inclusionary housing requirements, then they will donate it to the city. And we'll, the city will own it. And then with the idea of transferring it over for development. Um, I feel like I'm missing. CPWD, oh yeah, we, we sold the CPWD building. Mm -hmm. 
um, November 30th, right on the day that we planned on it. And like four business days before Village on Main closed, which was a little bit wrong. <laughs> but it was completed. <laughs> um, we did, uh, re we updated all their ADA compliance issues before we sold it, including uh, redoing the parking lot. And then we actually have to go back and do a fix there because we got to make one van accessible space. But we did everything because the VCA, our compliance agreement with HUD, um, listed items for that property. And we just, because of the people they serve, it was the right thing to do. We had funding available through the CV grant. And then um, we could also close out that property completely on our VCA here at the end of this year. Um, so that happened. The We were told that the Veterans Community Project is not currently in a position to buy 1228 Main. Um, first, a number of reasons. They're not necessarily, um, if they took on Briarwood, they're not necessarily in ready to take on permanent housing. They are really in that transitional housing um, segment of work for their, their clients. And also the building might be too big. They, you know, with hybrid work and everything, they might need something smaller in the long run. So, um, so that is on hold, if not off the table at this point, which is okay. We'll figure out a, another plan for now. They're going to continue leasing until they kind of figure out what's going on. They're, they got hit with construction costs skyrocketing, it would hit their tiny village pretty hard. So they really need, they just want to focus on getting that completed. Um, and there was one more. What am I oh, Zinnia. Zinnia is going vertical. And that's our latest update, right? Yep. Their um, <clears throat> element did another very similar project to Zinnia in Boulder. And they, I think they're just about fully leased up. Or are they? They're going through lease up. Right they're now. going through lease up, but they're not done. Yeah. But they're learning a lot of lessons that we're going to get to benefit from once we're leasing for Zinnia, which will start here probably in like the spring. Yeah. Start April prepping. May. Yeah. For lease up for that. Um, and then Christmas too. Christmas too. I need to get an update. They are switching over to an income averaging project and they've been working on getting all the approvals to do that with the investor team and Chapa and everybody. And that is going fine. Um, but I need to get an update from them on that fourth building because it is not that vertical yet. And uh, we've been, they're prepping for, they're starting lease up as well. Mm -hmm. So um, they're, so they're going to phase in lease up. So they're going to do it while that fourth building is still in construction. Um, I'm worried about the, their downward adjuster on credits and so are they, but um, I need to get an update on the construction side. We haven't been able to touch base with them yet. I was on a meeting with them about a week and a half ago, and they were waiting on a couple of temp CLOs, so they should be coming hopefully in the next 30 to 45 days. Okay. So, um, what, what is the town zone move? So they have laid foundation, and they started wood framing. Mm -hmm. So it, the infrastructure and foundation, they started work in June, and they just started vertical at the end of November, so it was a good five months or so of they had to move some utilities. Mm -hmm. They had to move a yeah. lot of yeah. utilities. Mm -hmm. So and any update on the attached um, service provider? Um, recovery yeah. cafe. Yeah. So <clears throat> we there we have a meeting set up with them for next week with Harold to go over their plan. We think that it is very they're getting a lot of um, positive reaction to purchasing a property on Main Street, in which case they would build there for their main office and then do a satellite service at, at the suites. And so the meeting next week is to talk about that service model and when it can get started and because they're ready. They're, they've put something together and we're gonna start nailing down what that service model looks like. So. What about the potential partnership for that first and main project? So the first and main, the transit station one. Yeah. So it looks like that is going to be, they're, they're going to satisfy their inclusionary housing requirements on that site, um, which they're looking, they're hoping for on-site 
provision of it and not the inload, but we'll see. It's not going to be LHA on that site at this point, but we do have the Royal site, which is about two blocks away. And so we'll be focusing there. They're going to focus on that site. When is that scheduled? Like when are they projecting that start? It is very, very early. It is a massive, massive project. It's like 400 the, units. Yeah. Monster. It's huge. huge. So there's a, it's only on one, the residential is only on one side. Mm -hmm. um, there's a legislation currently yes. for a state tax credit for TODs, which could be very beneficial for us. Yeah. Down the line, if that is there. If they include affordable housing there. Well, it, it would be Just money generally. for any TOD, <coughs> but that would be a, if you're, if it's 100% affordable. It would not be like not them, but yeah. us. Us, yes. right, for Royal. For that would Royal. be awesome. Yeah. That would be, so. That's what I'm hoping for. When we start digging into Royal, we really look at TODs or um, some sort of unique model. Maybe um, I was going to look at new market tax credits too, just to see yeah. what might be a potential for that one. Yeah. Is that the property where they have a big? Um, Royal? Not at Royal. There's a substation behind the cheese and the cheese importers, and that is the Miha site. Okay. That the Miha the site would be right in front of the substation, um, which we have not heard anything on very recently. Um, the transit-oriented development is it, I mean, it's first in name, so that that's 121. So the transit-oriented development is on the north side of that street. So there's going to be a lot going on in that whole area, which is why we're not rushing on Royal because A, we've got some things we can sort out for a bit, but B, we want to see what ends up really happening with that. And then if they're looking at like a master developer arrangements to see if, um, exactly, like how could we tap on to something that's already, I mean, if it's that big, it's going to be a big time development and maybe they would want to do more whole area broadly. So we're just watching and paying attention at this point. You mentioned the townhome, the half acre site needed to be in townhomes. Would that be for sale then? No. Well, I mean, we haven't gotten far enough to see anything, but if it goes to LHA, then it would be rental townhomes. Uh -huh. The only thing, reason why we say townhomes is just to, um, for families and to mix up the the unit type that's on that block, um, just to make sure that we've got a mix of incomes and and size of households and such. Because that is a, this site, if it was 2023, that site would not actually qualify for the inclusionary housing. Because the way we built it into code is, we don't want to concentrate, um, over concentrate. And so we base that on QCT. So in 2023, it's in a QCT, and so therefore they would not have been eligible to use that site for inclusionary housing donation. But in 2024, it's removed, which blows my mind, frankly. But in 2024, they, I mean, it's, it meets all the requirements. So, um, but, you know, in my mind, there's a balancing act. Don't want to concentrate, especially in an area where we're already having a lot of neighborhood problems with unhoused folks, um, just very much all in that area. But then on the other side, we don't have a neighbor issue to raise a steam. It's a very developable site. It's near transit. It's near job opportunity. Like there's a balance. I mean, I don't want to over concentrate either, but I also want to either get it or we don't get it. We can try and put it in other neighborhoods. Um, like this site is incredibly unique, but it is completely deconcentrated from at least uh, income restricted, except for this area, but it has no neighbors to, to raise a sink. And so in my mind, there's value to getting something actually built without having a big public Fight. uproar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you gotta just weigh all the, all the factors. Has LHA ever done for sale? Mm -mm. And that's something I think that 
we've talked about like rent to own as a way to transition into that, but LHA has never done strictly for sale. Um, and if so, then it might just stay with the city if that was going to be the idea. Pay for the ECU. That's not but that but that would break inclusionary housing wow. rules because they're supposed to get the yeah. units. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if it's to another affordable provider? Is this allowed to be used? I mean, we we could certainly do any of that. Um, I don't know about this, but this is we're way early. Yeah. But I think if if any, if we were going to give it to another rental mm -hmm. provider, it would stay with LHA. Thistle has done. Um, uh, affordable for sale because they're involved with Blue Vista. So we could maybe do that too, but it's all options to weigh in the next year. Yeah, I think we just said it's kind of out of our wheelhouse too. Sure. Yeah. 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 And the, I guess anything else on a middle income housing authority? It's been know? quiet. So we submitted. The city submitted our letter on November 15th saying the city would not veto to a project that looked like this. Um, and the developer is supposed to resubmit with those parameters and then see if the MIHA board approves it. We don't expect the MIHA board to even meet until January at least, so uh, we haven't heard anything yet. I do, I am just keeping in touch with the developer just to make sure you keep chatting with us if there's anything we need to talk through any of this, but we're basically waiting until January to make sure the Miha board is going to accept a project like this. So what we said, the basics of what we said are, um, in exchange for not receiving tax revenues on 80% units, um, we would want a fee paid to LHA to cover the unique services that we provide, which is access to our service coordinators, access to our public safety relationships and all of the, the things that the city LHA partnership can bring to a project. Um, and we want some 70% units because the way the middle income housing authority was set up does not perfectly fit long rent. And if we're gonna do this here, middle income to us is 70% units. So that may not fly, but we try and we have data to back it up. So, um, we asked for that. We asked for some sort of benefit to LHA in exchange as a swap, basically, for losing tax revenue on what is market units here. Um, a right of first refusal if the state ever sells these properties, like at the Miha program, because it's so new, just they decide they're not going to do this anymore, that the LHA can have first right. Uh, there are things like that is what we included in this proposal say that the city would veto and really the only reason that would veto because it's still great to have a development on that site and bring people downtown but it's no property tax on what is market rate here so that's the trade-off that's why we were really negotiating hard on some of those aspects <coughs> so all right that's all i have let me just see if there's Items for input from the LHA Board of Commissioners. Uh, a is met lease of addendum. Hot off the press. Mm -hmm. This morning. Mm -hmm. 8, 822. So you have a draft in your packet. Mm -hmm. And this is a with some revisions that came in just this morning. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I printed two. I printed two. It has some as came in. So you printed the ones with your comments and I printed the ones without, so it's perfect. <laughs> so then we want no, the maybe one. it's the ones with the comments are in the agenda and then this is the one she said this morning. Okay. Perfect. Because I'm just going to go off memory with our revisions. Um, we met with Christy on Friday and discussed some of the revisions that you see highlighted in the packet. And Additions that we made. Um, number one being the every getting in the unit to replace the batteries every six months when necessary. We're really hoping that it's longer than that. Um, the next highlighted residents shall notify management immediately if the metal detector emits any noises 
her alarm. So I ensured Christy that it would not make a noise, but she wanted to put that in there just in case, just to see why it. And then Lisa had a great comment to add regarding um, the day the unit was tested and actually made. And then at the bottom you can see you know, where everyone has to sign in an initial. So pretty straightforward addendum. Um, any questions or additions? So our plan is, what's our plan for using these units? Assuming the battery stuff works right. out. So right now we are testing, so let me back up a little bit. We, we got a new detector um, with a new platform, meaning new, new everything as far as the technologies moving forward. Um, we put that in a, a hot unit at the suites and it's running off alkaline AA batteries and I've had to go twice now. So what's great about the new data set is that I can see the, the battery voltage going down whereas the other ones, you couldn't see anything. It was just, it automatically went inactive. So what's interesting about this is Harold and I talked because I said, hey, this is the second time or we were told that it would be about 14 months or 10,000 cycles of set, sensing, but Due to our understanding uh, after meeting with Dan is that we really think that, that it's draining the battery because it's trying to connect. There's a connection issue with the carrier. So um, our the ultimate plan is that we're, we want to send our SIM cards to them. So our SIM cards are in there for the LTE network, um, which we believe is with the new platform is going to be the solution. So, on that note, Harold decided to move forward with, and, and we're still we're still on a holding pattern because of, of this issue that we need to meet with Dan, and it's been pushed up, I think, till the 20th to meet with uh, New Zealand to talk to him about, you know, what we're seeing here. I've been communicating with him each and every step of the way, trying to just let him know, hey, this is what we're seeing, um, but Harold wants to purchase 28 of these to test at the city level in the bathrooms at the memorial building at um, the senior basically every every public restroom rec center um, library so um, we're hoping we're stalling because we're hoping that this connection piece is the real reason we're having the battery issue um, because if we have 28 of them in the city facilities I mentioned to Harold that I might pull my hair out. <laughs> That's going to be a little bit difficult to manage. Um, you should be into that one. Yeah, right. Batteries, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, well. That's exactly right. Um, <laughs> so he did. He he does have Doug Spite with Risk helping on this project, and the other piece of this is that we met with a remediation company out of the Pueblo area that is moved to northern Colorado, and they're they. They're rock stars, the meeting that we were in with them. Um, they are just very adamant about their process and how they're getting 0.5 or, or below with just heat using heat and water versus demoing everything. And they, the, the woman that she got on, online with us, she was down in Pueblo, she's like their lead um, and she she's very knowledgeable. So we met with them, and Harold had Doug walk them for bids for a few of the bathrooms to clean them before we put the map detectors up, um, and not getting a baseline of knowing what anything might read. Um, so that's in the works as well. We're still waiting on that bid to come back. Um, but pretty amazing process for when you know they're, they're describing it versus tearing everything out. And the success that they've had down in the Pueblo Housing Authority, um, they work very, very closely with us. So we're, so. we're going to test them out with one unit at the suite. We just got our bid, so. We got our bid for oh, so the clean the bid. or bid for? The clean. Okay. Oh, you did. So that means the city, we should be getting yeah. that soon, too. So, and it was basically the same price as what uh, WeCycle had their cleaners bid. Do they have much of a waiting list, or can they get those in bid before they come out? Well, since they're, they have, they're starting a branch up here, they think they can get us pretty quickly, so. 
And the unit, that unit specifically was really low anyway. Right. It wouldn't have had a bed metal. Correct. But. So Sarah, are we the first ones to use these meth detectors? Or have other places used them because of the problems we're having? Several places have used them, and they disclose that they have a couple of Colorado um, vendors, and I believe Jefferson County. They haven't disclosed exactly who. Um, and I actually have comments from, um, they're not a housing authority, but it's pretty similar to a housing authority in New Zealand that they wrote. They wrote great comments that they've had no problems. So I don't, I, I really believe it is a carrier connectivity issue. So Sarah, we, so when we buy these units for them, um, do we have to also lease their IP to process the data? So are we going to have like an ongoing thing with that as well? Yes. That's, okay. Well, that's gotcha. an ongoing cost, and it depends on how many we buy. But okay. basically, Harold negotiated some, especially with the city side, he negotiated some ongoing costs due to what we will end up getting. So, so. Yes, my question when I was looking over the draft, and I, I mean, these are pretty much similar. If I'm wrong and it's in this, then just let me know. Um, but, you know, we talked a lot about like, the notice issue, which this is, this is great, you know, that everybody's going to see this, that notice of what's going on. But I was just thinking if I was a resident reading this, I think I'd be a little concerned if there wasn't like an actual list of what chemicals we were like looking or testing for. And I, I just feel like, gosh, you know, I'm not, I'm not making meth, I'm not cooking meth, but I'm so, you know, I don't want to set this off. And then I, you know, sort of thought like the chemicals used in manufacturing, I mean, it's why people cook meth, right, and make meth. Uh, it's, they're so easy to get. Like the red pea, the red phosphorus, like they're in fireworks, and there are many reasons we don't want fireworks <laughs> in houses. I get that, but they're also on the tips of matches. You know, like people buy massive amount of matches to cook meth. Um, or iodine. I mean, you know, this is like stuff I have in my house, and I, I guess I just don't have a clear enough. I thought obviously pseudo pseudoephedrine, and now that all those cold medications are going to be yanked off the market for essentially being ineffective, there's all sorts of information saying that pseudo is going to, you know, come back in a big way. Though it is being regulated, but more people are going to rely on it. So, I guess my concern is with these sort of common household things that people use to make meth. You know, are the detectors testing for those? That'd be my first question. Um, and then my second question is, you know, it just seems like it'd be really hard to enforce. Like in the, what the residents agreed to in number four, it says you can't use or add like any chemical, right, that's used in making meth. And again, I mean, that covers cold medication, it covers matches. So I guess those were kind of my two concerns. It just comes back to like, I just want people to feel like safe and comfortable and they're not worrying, oh shoot, you know, if, you know, I don't want to get busted for lighting a match in so, my apartment. Two clarifications. First, this is not going to be attached to everyone's lease yet because right. it's only going into clean units. Okay. So basically new new tenants mm -hmm. will have this attached. Um, we can't do this for, for people in progress on their tenancy. Sure. So then secondly, it's a little tricky because the chemical that the detector is testing for is proprietary. Right, I, I read there, that so, the website, it's very, it's very sparse, and yeah, they're, they're mm -hmm. applying for trademarks yeah. right now, both in New Zealand and internationally. Mm -hmm. Those are really difficult, you have to be really careful to cover your feet, right. but if you're a company, because if you give away too much of the information, yeah. that really recuts that on your, on your copyright, your trademark, right. whatever you're going for. So we could put so, yeah, that's, that's some tricky. chemicals that are known to be in there. I don't know how to address so, that actually and be specific enough. I, I would say that that is not an issue due to the fact, like if we were to do an inspection, well, let me back up. We haven't seen anyone making meth except in one pot. Mm -hmm. And if they're doing the one pot, they're going to have still minimal chemicals. Right. So that is because of the Meth is all, almost all the meth now is coming in from Mexico. I'd say 98%. So we do not see the issue with people making it here. And I think if I think it's discretion. Like if I saw, it's all about what you're looking at. If I went into an inspection and saw some 
kitchen pots, some chemicals, some some batteries, some some matches. Like I haven't seen that in years. We have not as uh, in the city of Long not seen that in years. We've seen some one one pots in a backpack in a car, um, but I think it's. It's literally like I love your idea of listing the chemicals in it for right. people to be aware. Right. But I don't think unless they're unless we go in and see a, an enormous amount of these things. No. That, I mean that makes a lot of sense to me that it would be discretion. Because of course it'd be silly if we were you know, going in and like are those matches by your camera right. 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 Yeah. But when you have a document that people are signing, like I just don't want people to think like, but it does say in there. You know x y and z and i could get evicted or i'm not sure if i'm you know doing things correctly i'm just you know if somebody asked me to sign this that's what i'd be worried about because sure. i wouldn't want to mess up like i wouldn't want to set off the detector and create more work right. for the manager for lhj mm -hmm. or of course seeing what jeopardize my passing i guess i read it and i get your point there but i as a resident if i was reading this the last couple of sentences of that second paragraph Mm -hmm. Where it talks about if there is an alarm notification, then there's further testing and they'll verify it that we're in a professional company. So, as a resident, yeah, I lit a match and somehow that set it off. I can rely on them actually doing further testing rather than just moving me out because it talks about further testing. That's how I read it. So. Yeah, absolutely. Most tenants don't read that. Well, that's. <laughs> I worry about signing things. I think people need to worry more about signing things. And we have an addendum that talks about the, the um, consequences of meth use. Well, we have like our crime free. Yeah. yeah. Like, so this is like separate of that. So I mean, it might be like, I had the second paragraph, and I want to say if you know, have those three positive tests, it would lead to an eviction. Mm -hmm. It could. Or, Well, I think, I mean, most people who are probably, I mean, a lot of people would just basically be judgment proof in this situation, but it's just saying that they read and identify and hold harmless, uh, which means that they technically, you, the LHA, or so you'd be able to recover from them for all costs associated with, like, the cleaning. Um, with litigation with the attorney's fees, I think are specifically listed in here. Court costs, you know, it just doesn't doesn't happen a lot, but I think it's important language to have in there to, first of all, take it as serious it is, and if there is a way for, you know, the LHA to go and recover, so they, they should that's be able to That's the idea. I'm probably way off base here because I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> but I know in the, well, it's just a little confusing to me. So one of the reasons as a lawyer is you know in the eviction court, you can't write into a contract that I'm, I can seek lawyer fees from you, but you can't seek them from me. It's a legal agreement. Yeah. Um, so that, when I read right. this, I, it's different for different courts and different areas of law. I, I think because this is uh, part of the, the agreements, sort of upfront the lease agreements, you can have that language. and. You'd have to ask the city attorneys and make sure, but I'm pretty sure yeah. they're okay with it. And the, our, the it. fair house, Christie wrote yeah. this. Yeah. Um, and really, this is damages that LHA would incur because of your tenancy, not necessarily just eviction fees. Um, no, I, I understand that. The, the thing that caught my attention is one of the written laws is you can't put into a contract. That's what I was, I was thinking the same thing, yeah. um, just to make sure, because that, that's now so new and fresh. You also can't like recover them in litigation, and, and you may be right. I mean, I haven't looked at it. It's the most no, recent no, thing. I think it's very my attention. No, for sure. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. So it's worth we can just ask Christy the question, like making sure that this. I mean, I I trust that Christy keeps that all this new stuff in mind since we've been talking to her about it so much. But let's just make sure we can answer to this really clearly. So if somebody does test positive and go through. Rigmarole testing the other stuff, you know, we might evict them, we could evict them. What is a plan for these individuals? Are we going to kick them out? Are we going to give them resources? 
you know, it's either they clean or is there stuff in the mailboat that you prefer them to? So, yes, but that's not necessarily the property manager position. Right. So, right. yes, as a city, we have been doing that outside of Mesa. Um, oh, you know, I, 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 I completely really understand that, but it's just like, I just don't want to keep these people out of the street because then you're creating a problem for the city as well, right? That is then yeah, the is. crux of this whole it issue. Is. You keep people housed, but then you are putting the, their neighbors and the property management and the property itself at risk. Yeah. How do you... Yeah. It's a balance. It's a balance. Mm -hmm. So there are resources and we are going to utilize Recovery Cafe once they're in to try and make referrals, but it's officially outside of the LHA balance. We're now moving into city. Right. Um, so we can, and, and at that point, I mean, to be quite honest with you, at that point, I mean, we have a property here in Longmont right now where they're they're literally moving these folks in, and I don't know what to tell them because I know that they're moving in people that are using meth right now, and that that's their choice. And then they end up learning that they're the problem, and then they end up being addicted. So it's a it, it, and it's just to your point when you're using meth. You're most likely using fentanyl right now, so it's the ups and the downs, and um, it's really, I mean, to be quite honest with you, people have to hit their rock bottom, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes it's moving out to the street and being homeless is their rock bottom. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the reality of, of it. I was going to say, we've had some evictions for meth, and it was a whole team effort, you know, we, I moved Sarah and she, if there's kids involved, we would need to be looped in way before um, we have resources for them. You know, it's something we don't handle, but we make sure that there is something beyond us to help navigate the next steps. I think a much better connection than ever before mm -hmm. due to our, our relationship. So, I don't to try this issue. <clears throat> I'd like to suggest that maybe on a quarterly basis we review the type of reasons for evictions we've had over the quarter. Not so individual cases necessarily, but just we've only had one meth eviction, and that is because I'm sorry. It has to be meth. I mean, we've got the one we had court on Monday for, which was pretty interesting. <laughs> what is that doing? This is a special order judge. I would say we'll be interested on at least a quarterly basis. We find out why we've got tenants that. And we have a lot of it's uh, rent payments and stuff, but I think, yeah, we could go through why the, the situation and how many notices we sent, or you know, kind of the background, just so you guys can see kind of what we're going through. And well, yeah, especially with Sarah kind of pointing out that a lot of people are moving in who make us seem like a general feeling of or knowledge of, you know, they uh, maybe abusing meth. You know, if you already have that on your small post sheet, you know, there really might be people who are going into their lease places or just be friends with the person who's lease. I mean, it seems to me that the uh, it has to be a massive uptick or at least an uptick, right? And people who are going to get thrown out. And so it might just, I don't know, it might be helpful to have that information as we go forward. I think it's sort of quarterly. And kind of recall yeah, that'd be helpful. that we've only had one eviction for actual meth. Right. And when we don't put that into the eviction, mm -hmm. they can go and have be housed anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we are passing the buck on to now somebody who may not have the resources that LHA yeah. has to manage this. Yeah. So that's the that's the crux of the problem too. Um, that. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting point mm -hmm. because one of the things we do in the eviction court on every case is try to convince the landlord to let us leave the eviction. Right. So it's not on people's records because you have the outside of corner. Yeah. You, know, you get people who don't have stuff on the record if they're homeless and they're back in right. the city's problem. Yeah. Yep. That's why when we go to court, we sit there and there's some that we are a hard, we can't suppress or we know we cannot suppress. You, you know, I'm very hard on that. I have it like if we have any suspicion, we know there's drug use or anything that would affect another landlord negatively, we try not to suppress. But like I just logically, the, like more people will be like found out. Right? I mean, that's the whole point of doing this yeah. is yeah. to make sure that we're uh, you know 
covering our books with insurance costs and making sure people aren't smoking. And hopefully below. being, what we're hoping for is that it's preventative. If someone cares enough about their housing yeah. that would prevent you from doing it. By the way, we do not know exactly what's going on right now. But when was the last time we had a positive meth test? Been a few months. Oh. Yeah, all of the woods, <laughs> I don't know why, but right. having the conversation transparently and on the table at all times, our residents to know that we're not just ignoring this and pushing it under the rug, I want to say that that plays a role. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it does. Yeah, not a good place. And talking about it, talking conversations, right. talking about meth detectors, having them out. Now mm -hmm. they're in what? Two, we've had them at three different properties now. So. They're in the lobbies. Do they make you switch from meth to something else? <laughs> Very possible. <laughs> which, we, you know, that's the. Yeah, but if they didn't once we figure out math, then, then they, we have more use meth from here. Maybe they will just keep it separate. <laughs> keep it separate. Yes. I don't know. It was the So you have seen them. And, it, and ultimately, bigger conversation, but you, I mean, landlords looking at their, their, their criteria, um, and I just recently heard, too, that people were moving away from looking at any of their civil background, which is quite shocking to me, and they're just doing criminal, which is another huge change in laws in the last five years, right? Yeah. So, it's made it harder to look at everything. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, um, it's it's a slippery slope as a landlord. Like you don't want to go into that territory anymore. Where it's just all out. So you're so that's why you set your criteria. <clears throat> Susan and I have met about this, and I think we're we finally have a list of to to bring up to folks that are interested on a set of criteria that is legal. It's it it, it could work for people like. So if there's a reading that's concerning enough for my LHA to send somebody to go in just for that person's safety or whatever, like who's going in and is it like, do you envision sort of figuring out with the resident a time to come in and do additional testing or, you know, obviously I just don't want to think of somebody just walking into, you know, an apartment where people are smoking that, like that'd be scary. <laughs> so just sort of how, how do you guys envision that going forward? Since, you know, obviously we're not sending like police into the right. room. So like how does LHA going to do that? If we have reasonable suspicion to believe in, in LHA from the get-go, it's just taking literally from what? what we're telling them. Like maybe an officer was in the unit, they saw some paraphernalia, maybe an officer arrested them outside the property and they found paraphernalia and drugs on them. Um, at that point, they would post a notice to go into the unit and that has nothing to do with me. And they would, we would do our preliminary tests as we have been and then go off that Community meeting. managers do that managers. currently. Gotcha, okay. Wearing PPE. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah. And then so, yeah, if it comes, if it comes a positive, yeah. then we bring in the industrial hygienist. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. When there, we have that suspicion, uh, that suspicion, we, we, I have, it's two staff members, one stays at the door, and we have Narcan and everything else, too, that's so. Great. That's good. Gloves, booties, full cover suits, whatever we need, so. Mm -hmm. We don't need full cover suits. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to wear them. <laughs> There's a unit or two, we might have needed them, so. We have learned been good. Yes, so okay. we have that option. But that's the that's the problem. When we have come across paraphernalia in the unit, we had no mm -hmm. inkling that that was going to happen. And then you're going in and turning a unit, and it's on the drawers. Yeah. yeah. So that that was the last, the current one, that, the one that we're uh, waiting to be clean. Uh, resident uh, was in the paper. She got hit by a car, deceased. Um, we got possession from the daughter. We went into the unit. And the daughter opened the door and found the paraphernalia. So that gave us suspicion to test. And were you wearing PPE when you went in? You just put it on once well, that happened? Well, they had gloves on because of the roaches. Right. But, <laughs> but, yeah. What's the demographic of the people that were 
Was a mess? All over the board. Everywhere. 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 I've had seniors, we had a, what was he, 78 year old, that it was a eviction for hoarding, and we started cleaning out and found 10 plus meth, meth pipes, bag of meth, like, yeah, had to call Sarah. They, they weren't even showing up to that one and had to call her to come pick it up. We've had um, families, multiple families, parents with young kids. Mm -hmm. 20 to 30 year olds, it's all over the board. No no racial or ethnic mm -hmm. patterns to be found. Mm -hmm. Or age. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to the private market. There's no socioeconomic differentiation either. Mm -hmm. um, it's everyone. Mm -hmm. Going back to turning the units, is there a mobile testing unit that you guys would want to throw in the room for a day before you actually go in and clean We up? have a swap kit. Like, so if we have any suspicion, we have, it's uh, four swaps that test the whole unit. And that's what we do as a, if we have any, any suspicion, we, they had criminal activity, we might not even be meth. It's just $40 and it just gives us the peace of mind or knows us how we, t tells us how we need to proceed. So. But in that we, situation where you get in there and you have no idea and you pull the mm -hmm. door open, you've already exposed everybody who's been in the room. Is it better just to make it? I don't know what the cost is, so maybe it's cost prohibitive, but you just need to make that part of your process. I think wearing gloves and booties should be part of the process regardless of the, so we, if we find out, but um, I don't have 10 eyes yet or 50 arms, so I, I mean, and I'm kind of saying that jokingly, right? Like we at, as a society still have not determined, like minus the, I mean, if the child's licking a wall that has meth on it, there's a problem, but for the adults that are going into these units that are exposed, um, we haven't, we have, there's no medical or scientific anything saying that, oh, that there's... Like, Just being in the presence is correct. To do yeah. 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 Same with it, I mean, looking at the fentanyl piece too, like we can go into a unit and someone just smoked fentanyl, um, that, that is not going to put you down. It's touching it, touching it will put me down. So, very high insurance concerns from the police standpoint. So, the community managers, when you think about property management, you don't think about always, not maybe this group, this group probably does more, but the general public, don't think about the risk that a community manager faces every day. Um, there's some very, very traumatic situations that they witness or are inserted into. Um, and it's it's on par with, this is what Harold says all the time, it's like on par with public safety. They need to be trained in things that public safety needs to be trained to encounter. Um, so when it comes to that, it's, the, it's similar insurance coverage that we have with on the city side. We also have peer support and we bring in um, counseling services if there is a traumatic event, um, which could be one of many things. It could be coming across something that's been deceased for a period of time. It has been um, stuff that you can't ever unsee in your whole life. Or a shooting or something. Just like any community resource worker in any community. So we do have the same type of coverage that the city has um, for anything like that. And all we can really do is be prepared, um, use PPE, have our training. Um, there, this is part of the job, and it's a tough one. We get through. My staff is required to go through quite a few trainings that the city puts on. Everything from de-escalation, drugs, the police department puts on. There's a whole laundry list. Like even driving, what you know, look for. Uh, we just piggyback off the. Of City's training, so anything that would apply to our position that's taught by a police officer, police are involved in, we're taking. So final thing on this lease, when it go to when it goes live, I think the mold and moisture disclosure at the bottom. It's the update. And then the other this is <laughs> yeah, kind of silly. Mm -hmm. it, but should number four be number one? President shall not manufacture views just to be, instead of they shouldn't tamper with the detectors. Mm -hmm. And I think you should pull out resident as responsible for the actions of their guests and occupants. And 
make that one bold too. Because there's a lot of times when people get well, at least at BCHA, the have been in, is that right? before, yeah, mm-hmm. before separated out. been evicted because like their daughter was staying there and using. Mm-hmm. And then right, elderly mm-hmm. parent who is it's not a drug user is right. not on the street. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. and then just on the third line, the nay should be any. It's just a typo. Number four. I also hate reading text like this from a legal standpoint. Can you fix the text? Where it's, it looks like it's um, like a PDF converted to Word in the, oh, yeah. and then the, the spaces the are all out. Writer. <laughs> so I took this off of what she says, and it had a change to Word to PDF to print it without the comments. Yeah, so you, you could just run a, unformat everything yeah. and redo it. Mm-hmm. I know it's a pain in the ass, but this is really hard to do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll make the font bigger. It's not what we see here. It's good. The spacing. Uh, learns. <laughs> so the recommendation is to put them um, above the door and I mean it would be I think property dependent because if it's a studio um, you would probably want to put it above the doorway to the bathroom um, and again the, the the plate, you need to look at where people are using it most often. Bathrooms, bedrooms, not likely out in the living space unless it's a studio, mm-hmm. right? At the suites, it's a little different. So I think it would be unit specific. Mm-hmm. Um, I, think, I think earlier you, you and Harold said that it would take up stuff going up the hallway oh, as well. Yes. So mm-hmm. that would be my concern is kind of getting a, a false walk. Yeah, just yeah. because somebody walks by it. Uh, you know, how close it is to that hallway. What I'm seeing, if, even if we were to get a, a small sample, mm-hmm. it, it, the, the gas sensor has to be literally taking a sample at that time, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't be significant enough to trip us. To It has to be a 60 or above. Mm-hmm. The other day we had a 10 at, at Spring Creek, and I was like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. So. Lisa and I are moving the camera that, so we can kind of see and go back and I can see, oh, well, who, who walked through here at 6.30, yeah. right? Um, or that time frame, but they're still in the air. So, yeah. um, so that wouldn't trigger anything in our view at that moment. At that time. Well, no, we would see it, but a 10 is like, I mean, nothing to really, it could be like that person was with someone and it got on their clothing, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, what, what? Like 50 to 60 is what we are concerned with. And that's what we're going to be setting. Is Correct. Is yes. 50 or 60, that's when we'll go Correct. And, and then we can, if we get, if it buzzes, or buzzes, it's not really a buzz, but you know what I mean. Um, if it goes off, we go in, we can do the swap. And if nothing comes up, then Great. we can say mm-hmm. yeah. maybe it was a walk or something else. They had somebody, you know, it was on their clothing. Mm-hmm. And, you know. and I get, so anytime um, it's tampered with or moved, I get an email. So that's what basically the triggers the so called alarm. It's silent, <clears throat> it's an email, and you can put as many people in the email as you want right now. It's just me. Um, and the only thing I've really, well, the only emails I've gotten is when we're taking the batteries out, moving it around. So, so I don't know how it's proprietary. I don't know how much information I've been able to share with you. But is it pretty much what they're looking for is just like literally just the exhalation or the smoke from mm-hmm. from something that like mm-hmm. it's not really looking for anything else. Is that, I mean it could possibly, but not for what we're measuring. It's the main chemical in methamphetamine. That's right. Mm-hmm. So it's not you guys aren't looking at anything other than that. And then when we're testing using the test kits and the swabs, how I mean the, the unit I mean how, how sensitive are those? Or for the smoking yeah. of it. It's pretty accurate. Like if, if somebody just smokes in a unit, it will pick that up. Yeah, it, well, it shows us, um, it's kind of like a range. Yeah. Like it's, um, the light gets darker, the more there is. Kind of, uh, it's like a pregnancy test almost, but the darker it is, the more you know you have. Mm. So, and then we bring in the hygienist and they can give us right. the actual yeah. amount. Mm. So, but we can look at the test and be like, okay, that's, that's nothing. That's not going to test high enough, but based on all the ones we've done, the areas we've tested, and then comparing them to the hygienist test, mm-hmm. we kind of can tell by the number, okay, this is going to be a very light clean, 
Yeah, so if we get a low reading, we're sort of we'll bring in the other. To confirm the number, make sure it's below. Yeah. yeah. So our vacant unit plan. Um, assuming we make the order of the machines, then what properties are we focusing on? Village place, I know, is one because we're going to attempt to. Um, if we have, well, there, this is to be talked about, but if there is contingency left over in the construction budget, we could use some of that to purchase the initial um, machines. <clears throat> but the problem is we're going to have move, out, move back in starting as early as March 1st. So if we have them by March 1st, we can start putting them in the clean units and then adding this addendum on when people come back. Um, well, are they signing a new lease at that point, or are we just going to add the addendum to We could just add the addendum in, in, the, in the interim. Okay. Um, and because we, everything in the unit would be new, and we would test and verify that everything is negative, and then so we could do that. But that means we're ready to go March 1st for the first round. So we got, you know, 12-ish units going March 1st. Um, that was an idea, though, that we had of using those places it's all new. And then yeah, using on. vacant village. I'm just going to call it the village. <laughs> That's what I'm going to try and say for now, unless I don't screw it up. Um, and then others, it's just going to be ad hoc additions when we have unit turns. So that'll be across the properties. We're not planning on focusing on any one property right now, right? Well, and then, Julie, I mean, it goes back to Glenn's comment about the demographic. We're seeing it all properties, so it's not like one mm -hmm. property. Treat them all the same. Focus on mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What's the cost for the units? For the alarms? 600 but if we buy them in bulk, they literally go about, go down to about five or 550 and then ongoing costs, it depends on how many we have on loan. So with the 28, I think it was like a $3,000 ongoing for the 28 for the city. Um, and that, that's with some rejection of Carol's negotiation. Is that going to be there? Yes. $3,000 for 28 units for one year. Mm -hmm. And that's for IT, management, you know, yeah. Yeah. the data piece, problem solving. What you feel like at the cost is less than what we pay for one unit. Basically, yeah. when we have to do all the testing, the cleaning, decon, mm -hmm. we're looking. Just even the unit right now that just needs a cleaning, by the time we're done with that, it's low level, we're going to be out twelve to 15000 Is that us or is that That's insurance? Us. Well. No insurance. Just, okay. right. And have we found any insurance yet, Pedro? They pretty much said that because of all the claims we have, even going with the pollution, more than likely. You're not allowed to Because we have to make the claims. Oh, so we're done with? They, they yeah. say okay. they took away our MAP coverage. Will but they reinstate it if you hit a certain percentage in, of unit speed monitor or something? I don't know. Most don't get it. So I, it sounds like we were pretty fortunate to have it. <laughs> but they have to look at their risk factors. So whoever they're actually insuring at the time, if their population with our insurance company is all housing authorities, um, that's who they, they insure. They could be seeing a, a risk across the yeah. board. And so it wouldn't just be us, it's their whole risk. That so even doing. if we can show them once we've got the detectors in place and our claims go down, they might still be using an algorithm that doesn't take that into account. We tried to have a conversation with them. We want to do this, but we don't want you to be alarmed. No pun intended. <laughs> um, but and they just were like, we just don't know. And we knew that they were worried that if we just started testing units randomly, that we would have a spike and they don't want to be around for that part. So that was a very successful conversation. It seems to be an industry industry wide problem that we'd have to solve. Um, it's not just us. So we will certainly try again once we know that our claims have been reduced or we've got this pretty Locked in. Yeah, but at that point, yeah, I mean, if we're we monitoring it, we might we'd just be self insured at that point. Why, right. why go out and seek other insurance? Yeah, maybe. Pay extra for the additional Right. Well, so, technically, it only covered one because you had a cap of $100,000. So that's one yeah. unit. That's really bad. So one tier now. Yeah. But if you're actively monitoring it, then yeah. you're going to have bugs. That's the goal is to minimize that. 
servants, the protectors themselves, eighteen billion and a half billion. Manufacturer. Uh, back to the reporting software that the manufacturer gives to us. Just the manufacturer has access to the data. Yep. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's their IP, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially, they say, all right. They own it, probably. Yeah, yeah. they own it. They own it. Why do we have that license? license? An ongoing cost every year. True. Is there any restriction on what they can do with the data? Uh, the contracts, the city contracts these days are pretty robust about data sharing and making sure that you, like we had to test, not test, uh, we had to confirm that the pieces that go into these detectors were not manufactured in certain places in the world, for example. Um, so the city side of contracting is pretty on top of that. And there should be no identifiable data. No, there's not. It's not tied to a person. Feel good with all the notes for comments. What's the number of days that we're going to be responding to test sets? Do we, I don't know if you have that at all. Uh, I thought I saw, so it says within hours, blank hours of positive hours, test results. Yeah. Like 72, like maybe two days or something, or do we want? Yeah, do we want, how, that's a blank. The attorney left it blank for many reasons. Flexible. Yes, and that's ultimately it. Like if it's an extension, emerge like if it's a full, we we need in there forty eight hours. Like it could be that we have circumstances that have some properties might, might, might want to be in the seventy two. Right. So we might want to be twenty four, mm -hmm. but you'll yeah. be yeah. consistent. Yeah, yeah. we should be consistent yeah. then across mm -hmm. at least yeah. a property. Yeah, I think you started on right? Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, if if we're saying within, then it is a maximum that we could just put something in, and then we be there within we're hours. still covered so we right, if we did it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, if we got it, well, the other thing is that we have to give them a notice as well in order to enter the unit. We might so need, do you have to give them a notice to enter a unit? Yes. So if you're in the unit and you see meth pipes, what do you do, Lisa? If you're in the unit for a Already, you know, oh, already yeah. done the I'm not talking about the alarm. The alarm goes on. Oh, no. We need to give notice to them how long you have to give notice, notice, notice to enter. Notice. So, minimum, yeah. whatever the notice is yeah. per the lease, mm -hmm. 24 hours. Okay. Maximum yeah. three days. Right. But we don't we don't have to tell them the alarm went off. Yeah. No. We can say that we are, we can give the proper notice and go in. And, and we don't have to tell them why we're going in. It's just a, what would you, what would you call it? a? 24 hours notice of the section. Clean evidence. There, there is a on the open market you can use to help lessen. Yes. January 16th. This will go to the board. Yes. Simple green, right? And I can send that that schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Number seven, really quality of life. Anybody going for this? Yeah. Right, let's go on to number eight. OHA report, update on operations, occupancy reports. So, properties up in November about 95% occupied. We're renting, but not at a fast pace right now with the weather, and a lot of people don't want to move this time of year with the holidays and everything. So, we are Trying to get people lined up on the back burner. Um, Austin Meadows neighborhood. I currently have three units down for that. Those all require some type of little bit of rebuild. Um, one is the one that we've been working on for almost two years. It's coming along. It's getting drywall, stuff work, and everything else. So hopefully that one 
online back when you, right around the first of the year. Actually, hopefully all these are back online right around the first of the year. Um, senior, we had five vacants, but I got three rented. Uh, Fall River, they actually rented all of theirs that were vacant. Um, so we're hoping to end the year pretty good. Um, it's just trying to work around people's holiday schedules at the moment. Did you have second hand bonds? What? <laughs> The only reason I say that is because tax yes. credits come into play. Yeah, so I'm so the the, the sooner we can you know if they're just it's just a few more more things left to do, I think mean, it's a lot yeah. than it is cost. Yeah, so the two units um, we may just do in house for Aspen uh, neighborhood because they're not too much and what the contractors want. Patrick and he can take care of it. Patrick and Dave can do it in house faster. So. I'm just. Yeah. We don't. We. I remember I yeah. last year, we were worried about investors. were worried about uh, mm -hmm. our rent ready rates for their mm -hmm. tax credit because you can't have a tax credit yeah, for a whole yeah. year. So the, technically, these meth ones they've been clean, so they are they are habitable with what needs to be done. So, yeah, just, yeah. So they're not down. So. <laughs> the only one that's down to down is that B two still. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, and A, man. Yes. So everybody else, we can get that. Okay. <laughs> I know what you're asking. So. Um, I just know we went round and round last year. Yes. Fall the river. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> so still have a few units down for meth. We have seven three one two. Um, I believe that one should be almost done. They, so that one should be back online by the end of the year as well. Um, Seven three three zero. We do got the clean bins in now, so and the firewood wood ones will be done by the end of the year. Nice. Who's responsible for that? Firewood being a being a mentor. Uh, it's CRC. It's a, uh, Sarah and I uh, met the one lady. She worked for LHA way way back early two thousands. She was at the uh, Metro Denver Apartment Association orientation we went to. Um, so we. Have a bit of Alan. Is a clean or what uh, rebuild. else you have to do? Rebuild. Two, two rebuilds at Firewood. So. Yeah. That's going to uh, public health and safety things. Just to note, we didn't do property updates just because everything they reported last month we haven't done much. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. knock on wood. Things been good. Um, it's been a property and then super quiet. And the suites, you know, just pretty steady, but just, you know, dealing with some, dealing with MHP, dealing with some uh, residents that are kind of, you know, up and down in their, in their days. So having good ones and bad ones, but um, I think overall, we're really trying to find out just that if MHP is starting to use this ROI that everyone's spending a lot of time doing, so we're uh, waiting to hear back about that. We didn't hear anything in the last, no, she said, I was waiting on there. Andy. Yeah. So, um, our, everyone has signed this and kind of verified it, so I think it's back in MHP's lap, and we'll circle back with that, but really getting those ROIs when needed will help all of us strategize to assist these folks when they're spiraling. Does everyone know what people are saying when we say ROI? The facility situation. And I apologize for not getting yearly calls for service in detail for you. I have not had a chance to do that, but my plan, if you are interested, I can have that for January. So you can kind of do a recap of the last couple years and dive into a little bit of what we've been seeing more and less of. I think that'd be Do you be able to pull out your because I know you show in the calls for service when you <laughs> go out to do follow-ups or you're at coffee conversations, mm -hmm. and how many of those were you on site oh, too? So absolutely, I think I would show the your involvement, and, right? Diving into the data and kind of when people think of an overall call for service being super high, well, that that's not really the case, and we were able to. Um, really articulate that to even public safety staff regarding an issue recently, looking at calls for service on some businesses and diving into the data and seeing what calls are actually going on. So I'll, I'll get that ready for January. 
I guess I did this too, is you know, talking about the three mental health clinicians too, to be added in 2024. Are we started posting those yet? Or is there yeah. For those? Uh, so human services has taken the lead on that. And I just got an update. I was going to see what it was. Um, I think that they they finished the job descriptions. They they needed to re-benchmark the clinician one because uh, they just knew that it, the salary needed to be looked at. And um, it needs to still go through HR for benchmarking. Um, okay. Yeah. I've just I will follow up. It looks like she sent our job descriptions to HR. One for benchmarking, and I think we're going to just be finalizing these job descriptions and the pay rates here in the next couple weeks, and then probably at this rate, because HR and benchmarking takes some time, probably posting in January is what I anticipate is going to be happening. So the resource position that we're hiring for the senior sites, we start interviews, we have four interviews this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So this is the one that's not the clinician, it's the position that we have had, and we are focusing it off of the suites and onto just the typical properties. Um, to be accessible for, for more residents. So that one, it's all in LHA, wheel court, wheel court, wheel house, court, um, working with senior services to help hire that one. Uh, update from ED, I'm assuming we kind of covered it. Yes. So on to number nine, other business, anybody have anything else? I just would like to say that, um, the landscaping at Aspen, a senior, mm -hmm. looks very nice. And so I, I understand the weather and everything now, but what are the plans for getting the rest of the rocks out of the other places? Um, I have a staff member who's getting bids for a little write-on oh, thing that Harold's yeah. gonna pay for, and then weather permitting, we've had, actually have had quite a few maintenance out with injuries and COVID, so we've been running on a limited staff. So now the plan is hopefully maybe after the first of the year we can, with some nice weather, get to that. So, yeah, I know the weather has to be yeah. good. Yeah. Weather and we need the equipment to be yeah. able to lift the rocks. Yes, those rocks are large. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's it. Let's get started. Let's adjourn then at uh, 1022. Next meeting is Saturday night.